Right, this is my original Triumph bobber motor, and what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna be taking the cylinder head off it and the barrels and pistons out of it because I'm gonna be replacing the pistons and putting these in. These are JE forged low compression pistons. That way I can run 15 PSI boost through it. So at the moment, the motor, what's in here is a Triumph Thruxton motor, which has got a Rotrex supercharger on it, running nine PSI boost, and it's 120 horsepower at the rear wheel. But it's got the standard pistons in it. So these are the Triumph Thruxton pistons, which are 11.5 to one compression, which is a little bit too high for the supercharger, and they're not forged as well. So I've actually think I've already hurt the pistons in it, um, on the dyno because I leaned it out instead of reaching it up at one point and then it's breathing pretty heavy now but <laughs> They're gonna stay in there for the time being because we're gonna get it to the drag strip. I've been trying to get it to the drag strip, but I Haven't been able to for various reasons. So in a couple of weeks, we're doing that So if we break it there, we break it and I've got the other engine which I'm putting the forged pistons in to Go in its place. So we're gonna see what times it makes with 9 psi a boost i reckon it'll run low 11s it'll be nice if it gets in the 10s but <laughs> i'm not sure about that so this engine's in there for now until it breaks and then in the meantime i'm putting the other engine the original bobber engine together with the lower compression pistons in and then we can run 15 psi of boost which <laughs> is good to 170 horsepower apparently so i don't know if i'm going to wind it up that high i'm probably going to tune it so it's a little bit less than that 150 would be nice but of course you know how these things go you're never satisfied especially when you get into drag racing and stuff that's officially the quickest i've ever been up a drag strip There's not a lot of information out there about working on these motors, modifying them and, and building them. So this is why I'm doing a lot of these videos to actually get some of that information out there. I've got my trusty Haynes manual, which is gonna guide me a little bit to make sure I don't make any silly mistakes while pulling this apart. Someone else has gone through the trouble of doing all this work and producing this information. So it's quite helpful. What I'm hoping to do is actually get really involved in the engine building and start blueprinting the engine and stuff like that. And there's very little information about that. So hopefully this will be good content for the future. But that's not on the cards yet because we're going to try and get as much en out of the engine in its standard form as I can. And when it breaks, that's when it gets uprated and <laughs> fixed. And I, and I don't have the budget at the moment to do that. So... We're doing it in stages like this. Most of, our, most of the budget at the moment has gone on the supercharger, but that has actually given the channel a real good kick up the arse. So it's a good investment. Right, so first thing you need to do is take this um, cam cover off. A lot of people call it a tappet cover or a rocker cover but that's not always true because there's not always rockers under it and there's not always tappets under it. And I call it a cam cover because in this engine there is a cam under it, but other engines there isn't. with these engines that the gaskets do seal really tight um, and I never really we don't really have a lot of trouble with oil leaks on the modern Triumph engines not like the old ones there's a couple of little things like the, um, the rectifier whatever you call it for the alternator leaks and stuff like that but as far as engine leaks I've not had too much trouble only from my own stupid mistakes <laughs> So that's the gasket. As you can see, it's got a few more extra holes in it now. Right, so what we need to do is we need to get the rockers off and the camshaft out, and that's got the timing chain going around that, so we need to address that. So we've got to get the engine in the right place to do all this. 
Right, so what we need to do now is we need to actually lock, there's a hole there, I don't know if you can see that, which actually lines up with another hole in the block and you put a pin in there to lock this, uh, I assume it's top dead centre. And, and on the camshaft, there's a slot which you have to line up with the head. So, if I turn that round there, I don't know if you can see that, but there, that lines up with another hole, that's where your pin goes through. And then, up the cylinder head here, I believe we're 180 degrees out. I think that slot's got to be up the top because there's a tool that goes across the flat and locks into that to hold that in the right place. So we've got to turn the engine over. Another turn. I don't have spark plugs in it at the moment, so this is really easy. And as you can see, that's now that's now lined up a little bit closer to the head. So the pin you put in here to actually lock this in place, you can go out and buy a special tool, or you can buy a selection of special tools. Or you can buy a selection of special tools like I have. They come in all different sizes and they're really good for drilling holes as well. Six. This, I haven't filmed taking this off because it was off already because I actually took it off to do the oil leak for the oil that runs up through the stator wires. There's a video about that if you've got trouble with your oil leaks. So what size is that? Seven. 8mm I reckon. You could even use an 8mm bolt. Eight, that's quite tight. For now, I'm going to put a 7.5mm in. I don't want it too tight because I don't want to get it jammed in there at this stage. But maybe when I time it up properly, when I put it together, I'll use a different size. Is that in there? Oh, no, a drill bit isn't any good because the two holes are different sizes. I thought I was being clever there. But that's all right, because we can do that. We can get a drill that fits in the inner hole and then put a sleeve around it. So that's a six mil, and the outer hole's an eight mil, so. But for now, that'll work. What I can do is actually grind down an eight mil drill. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a tool which is going to lock this camshaft in place and so we can time it up. So I need to measure the thickness of that slot. Drills come in handy for this sort of thing as well. So it's just over 5mm, so I can, if I can find a bit of 5mm steel plate, that should work. I'm actually going to measure that with my calipers. <laughs> that way I can take this out to find a piece of metal. So now what we'll do is we'll remove the rockers and the mounts for the rockers. They're actually marked so you, you know where they go because that's inlet number two, inlet number one, exhaust number two, exhaust number one, and there's an arrow on the holders what point towards the front of the engine. So that's all pretty straightforward knowing where they go. So I'll undo these evenly with my trusty eight mil. What I really like about these modern Triumph engines is all the bolts are very similar sizes. I had an old Triumph T140 and all the bolt sizes were stupid and all over the shop. Uh, I much prefer working on the newer stuff. I enjoy doing this stuff so much more now I don't have to do it for a living. Well, this is a living sort of, I guess. I don't have to do this if I choose not to. It's actually so much more worthwhile doing this to make videos rather than doing this because someone's got something wrong with their vehicle and then after you've fixed it they do nothing but complain about everything what happens since you fixed it. You can't get them on wrong either because I don't think they'll fit on in the right. 
in the wrong place. So now I need to take the tension off of the timing chain and get camshaft out. There's actually dowels in here as well, so just be aware that they might get stuck in the other bit or they might fall out, but just make sure they're all still there before it goes back together and they're not in the bottom of the engine or anything. Also the same with these little lash caps on the end of the valves. They shouldn't really come off, but if they do fall off, just make sure you know where they are. I will actually remove them now so that I don't lose them. And then I'll, I'll put them in a tray here so they go back in exactly the, on exactly the same valve. And I've got them marked there so I know where they go. I've got the number one inlets and exhaust, number two inlets and exhaust. So that there is the bolt for the timing chain tensioner. We need to get the tensioner out. So that's the tensioner, just works off of oil pressure. And undo these Allen keys, what hold this guiding. I really need to get myself a five mil Allen key bit so I don't have to keep using this Allen key. The other good thing about actually making videos about doing this stuff for a living rather than actually working on people's vehicles to repair them for a living is you can do it at your own pace. You're not, <laughs> you haven't got someone on your back hurrying you up because you've got another two jobs in your slot what have got to be done that day. It's a really horrible way to work. But like this, well, it does take a long while like this filming. It takes a really long while. I could really do it with a ratchet. I need to get myself a five mil bit. I do actually have one. It's only a little quarter inch drive one like that. I didn't realize I had that. That makes things a bit easier. I could actually do with an electric gun as well, but that's not on my budget at the moment. Unless someone wants to sponsor me with some tools, that would be absolutely fine by me. Right, then that guide should pull out of there. Somehow. Maybe not. Maybe we leave that in there for a little while. Let's try that another way then. Let's see if we can get the chain off the camshaft. And the pan shaft out, it's stuck with the foil at the moment. Right, then that guide comes out. Let's stuff that through. Yeah, so we don't lose the chain. Yeah, basically the tensioner just pushes on on that bit there and then the chain runs on that and it adjusts the tension to the chain. To take the cylinder head off my trusty Haynes man manual tells me unscrew the bolts evenly a little at a time in the sequence shown in the illustration 10.15b so 10.15b tightening sequence so starting from the middle working your way out so that's not how you undo them you undo that the opposite to that. So be careful when you're reading manuals. I'm, I'm not sure about this manual. There's a lot of stuff which doesn't seem right and the page numbers don't correspond to different things. So this may just be a cheap copy, which I got off the internet. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna slacken them from the outside in. It's not actually so crucial actually undoing stuff. It's more when you tighten it up, you need to get it dead right. They're pretty tight. It's not, not easy to do on a bench like this. I need to make myself a, an engine stand. That's another little project I reckon. Be, be, be good content though. That's the other beauty about doing this as well. Making videos for a living instead of actually repairing stuff for a living. Like everything you do is content. Yep, 
yeah like even even if you break stuff you can make content out of it whereas if if it was if you were working on someone's car and you broke stuff it would cost you money rather than you getting any gain from it so making content i think is a great way to earn a living there's washers on these bolts so make sure you don't lose them we certainly don't drop them in the engine yeah always make sure everything you take off is accountable when you take it off otherwise if you have lost it whether it's fallen in the engine or not you don't know whether it's falling in the engine or not a lot of the time so you don't want to be wondering if you can't find you always want to find everything it's always good to have a magnet handy as well right, so that is now loose so that chain it doesn't matter if we drop that now because I'm taking the barrels off anyway, we can retrieve that. There, one head. I think that, just, that guy just pulls out there. It's actually really good making videos as well because if you can't remember where something goes, you can go back and look on your video. These dowels as well, make sure you don't lose them. There's one there and I reckon the other one will be in the head. Which it is, it's there. Right, this video is starting to drag on a bit now, so I'm gonna to have to do it in several parts. So in the next video, I'll be measuring the deck height, the height of the piston towards the cylinder head, because I want to compare what the difference is between the new pistons I've got and the old pistons. And I'm going to have to make a couple of tools to do that as well. I've also got to get a head gasket and a barrel base gasket as well, which I don't have, so that's going to take a little bit of time. But yeah, in the next video, you'll see me doing all that and hopefully getting the new pistons in. I'd just like to say at this point too, the channel is growing really nicely now and I'd just like to say thanks to you guys for actually liking the videos, subscribing and commenting. So if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, like this video and comment because it does help me out. So the better the channel does, the more I'm going to be modifying the bike and continuing with the Bobber vlog. So stay healthy, drink plenty of water. And have a great day.